Is it possible to raise a golden retriever in an apartment? The short answer is yes, it is possible. As long as you're doing these four things that I'm gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna break it all down, so stay tuned. For the best dog training and product advice, be sure to hit subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa. I am a certified professional dog trainer and I have helped hundreds and hundreds of pups and their parents live more peaceful lives together. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about those four things that you must do if you are raising a golden retriever in an apartment. And to be honest, there are so many people who don't do these four things that own a house and have a yard, but their dogs are really, really frustrated because they almost rely on their yard to do all of the exercise. This is why I found that a lot of my clients who live in an apartment actually do a lot more for their pup and their pups are mentally a little bit happier. Now, obviously this is a really big generalization, but I just wanna further drive in the point that these four things are really, really important regardless of whether you live in an apartment or have a yard. All right, so the first thing is to make sure their biological needs are met. One of the things that's really important is having proper nutrition. If you think about when you eat a really big cheeseburger or something that a little bit heavier and you eat that multiple days in a row, you probably don't feel your best. You probably don't feel as clear headed, all of that. When you eat healthier, you're getting exercise, you feel a lot better, you're probably in a better mood. And so same thing with our dogs, when they're not getting proper nutrition, proper exercise, when they're not at a proper weight, that's gonna really affect their mental health as well. If you're planning on adopting a golden retriever puppy, just make sure the exercise is age appropriate. Puppies do not have their growth plates fully set in yet, meaning you don't want to go on a really, really long hike or a long run with a new puppy. This can really affect their joints. If you're unsure of what is age appropriate exercise, have a conversation with your vet. They can help you out. I also have a exercise chart in my new puppy survival kit, which I will link to below. If you're planning on adopting an adult golden retriever pup, then keep in mind that they are a more energetic breed. Of course, breed generalizations aren't always correct. There are a lot of different personalities even within just one breed. So keep that in mind. But in general, they do need a little bit Bit more exercise than let's say a Laza Apso or a Shih Tzu. A great way to give your pup exercise if you don't have a yard is to grab a long line leash and play a game of fetch at a local park. You can even do play dates with other dogs in your apartment complex with your friend's dogs or go on a hike or a long walk. The main thing is thinking that a yard is going to take care of all the exercise for your pup is completely inaccurate. So by being in an apartment, you're actually putting yourself ahead because you don't even have that option. Well, most apartments don't have that option. Now I do also wanna mention one of the biggest considerations that you want to make when adopting a young puppy is how often they're gonna to have to use the bathroom. So a puppy can generally hold it one hour for every month old they are, meaning an eight week pup could hold it for about two hours and that is maximum. This is also a generalization and we never want to push it to the max because that's how we get accidents. So if you're in a high rise apartment, if it's a pain to go up and down stairs a lot, I really recommend ordering a subscription service with a fresh grass patch. There are a few brands out there. If you just Google fresh grass potty patch, you should be able to find a few different options. Here in Denver, there's also a local brand that will actually bring it to your patio and even clean it and replace it for you every few weeks. Now, the reason I don't recommend pee pads is because pee pads are very similar to the ground and you're gonna have a lot more accidents. We also wanna show our pups that going outside is really where we want them to go. Now, if you don't have a patio, then you don't have this option. That's okay, we'll have to work with what you have. So you'll just use your potty patch inside. While it's not ideal, it's definitely still better than pee pads because the grass patch is going to have that texture that we want them to get used to peeing on. All right, the second thing that we wanna consider is emotional and social needs. Now, the first thing within this category is just being really consistent with when you take them out. Dogs and puppies are creatures of habit, so the more consistent you can be with your schedule, the less accidents you're gonna have 
in your apartment because they kind of expect that they're going to be able to go out soon. Consistency also helps keep your pup mentally healthy. Now, another important thing to consider is emotional needs. Make sure you're giving your pup attention and you're spending quality time with your pup. This means not being on your phone and really spending that time bonding with your pup, training your pup, things like that. Another great way to satisfy your pup emotionally is to take them on sniffaris, also known as sniff and strolls. What you're gonna do is take a long line leash and just go to a big field, a park, and let them sniff around. Follow them around and really let them use their nose. This is very relaxing for our pups. Now, the third thing you wanna consider is mental stimulation. Golden Retrievers are very smart, they have brains that need to be worked, and there are a large variety of ways to help them use their brain. First is force-free training. So force-free training is a really great way to help strengthen that bond with your pup. The basis of force-free training is really showing our dogs and puppies what we want them to do versus always saying no or always having to redirect our pup. Don't get me wrong, sometimes we are going to have to redirect our pups, especially if we have younger puppies, but as much as we can, we wanna set up the environment so we can really reinforce them for doing the correct thing versus always saying no or taking things out of their mouth, things like that. I do have a free training and you can register for free for the on-demand webinar below. Another way to use their brain is to mentally stimulate them through using something like a snuffle mat. I like to feed my dogs in a mentally stimulating way for every single meal, meaning every single meal either goes in a snuffle mat, in a Kong, things like that, so they can really use their foraging skills. Another way to keep them excited is to not keep all of their toys out all at once and to rotate them out. This helps keep each toy exciting so that they don't get bored of all of their toys and you're not stuck constantly buying new toys. I like to keep three to four toys out and then rotate three to four out about once a week or whenever I sense that they are starting to get a little bit bored of their toys. Now, last but not least, this might seem silly to mention, but making sure that your apartment is dog friendly. I don't mean just actually the apartment policy, but making sure your neighbors are not super cranky and making sure that you have nice neighbors like when you're crate training, if your pup starts to cry a little bit, making sure that you don't have paper thin walls that your neighbors are going to complain about. Now, of course, there are ways to train your pup using positive reinforcement if they are excessively barking, excessively crying, but it's still gonna be a process. It's not an instant fix. So I like to mention just making sure you have understanding neighbors. Now, one thing that you can do is create little care packages before your dog or puppy comes home. Let them know that you are going to be doing a little bit of training the first few weeks. You don't anticipate them hearing any barking or crying, but just in case you brought them some earplugs, a cupcake, just a little friendly care package, maybe some wine that they like. And this way, it's gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable for them to complain just because you made this really, really nice gesture. All right, so that is it. All in all, you can see that not having a house and a yard it isn't a deal breaker, but there are some of these things that you will need to consider. Now, if you're planning on adopting a brand new puppy, there are also a lot of other things to consider like socialization, training, potty training, crate training, making sure they're getting age appropriate exercise. That's why I created this mini course called the New Puppy Survival Kit. And this mini course comes with checklists, video trainings, a Facebook group for support so that you really feel prepared to bring your puppy home. I also do want to mention that I also have a free Facebook group called the Possum Parents Facebook group and you can go in there, ask your questions to other like-minded pup parents and get support from the community.